Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode number 12 of Learning Motion Control with PLCs. I finally am getting to the point of talking about really what this whole series is about, which is relative and absolute moves with servo drives, or in this case a stepper drive. So it's just important to stop for a second and make sure everybody understands where we're starting from. So an absolute move, essentially from zero, which is where I've just home to here, if I move it by hand here, an absolute move to 100 would be right here around the middle of this axis. If I were to do a relative move of 100 from here, it would go 100 from where I'm standing, which would be an absolute position of 200 over here. So that's really what the difference is between absolute and relative moves. If I go right now and I say a relative move of negative 100, I'm going to come back here and end up at about 100 millimeters. If I do an absolute move to 100 millimeters, it's going to just stop right here, right at 100 millimeters. Absolute move to zero, all the way home here. Relative move of zero doesn't move at all. So that's the main difference between absolute and relative. Uh, even this is the same sort of stuff on on a CNC machines that you find is you can be in relative coordinates or absolute, and there's reasons for both. Um, but let's just focus on the difference of them right now and I'll talk in a minute about why you might want to use relative moves instead of absolute. Alright, so we're back in TwinCat 3 here talking to the remote PLC. We need to add a few things to execute these relative and absolute moves. Uh, first being, I've got some extra commands here, or extra function definitions I should say. Uh, MC move absolute, MC move relative, and then I've got some kind of working memory here in the local area of our main program for the number of moves we want to make, the current move number, um, the move distance each time we make a move, and the final move uh, distance for a relative move. We'll get to those in just a minute. But first, we need to not forget that I like to call these here. So I explained that a little bit more in past videos. And then we're going to head on down to our state machine to right as we finished homing, so right about here. Okay, so here after state 200, I've already added in state 300. I'm going to paste in quite a bit of code, but we'll go through it, so don't worry about it at all. The next state here is state 300. So what we've done is added an MC move absolute, call our axis reference here, and we start giving it uh, all of it the parameters that it wants. So position is going to be our absolute position, which would be right around the center of our axis that we just looked at. Velocity is 100, that's millimeters per second, so that's a tenth of a meter a second. Acceleration, 500 millimeters per second squared, so that's uh, pretty close to half a G. So a G will be 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm off by a factor of 10 there, 10 and a half. So this would be a um, 1,000 millimeters a second would be 1 meter per second squared, which would be a tenth of a G. So we're at 1 20th of a G here. So not, not very fast acceleration, but that's fine. Um, and then jerk, we're, I'll talk about this in a moment, but we're, we're limiting jerk to a relatively large value here because we're, we're not too worried about it at these accelerations. So... Let's talk a little bit about what these values actually mean and how they shape the profile of your move. So I'm going to grab my trusty MS Paint and hopefully I can explain this a little bit. I'm going to grab a color here. This axis will be uh, speed and this axis over here is time. So let's label those speed and delta time. So as we traverse in time, our speed is going to change of the motion. So the way that it looks here is we'll get a nice color, blue. As we start our move, we'll have an acceleration. And we'll, we'll go on this accelerated slope, so we'll gain speed over time until we reach what I've kind of come to call Vmax, but really that's your velocity. But it's the maximum velocity that you'll reach in this uh, move profile and then you will decelerate and let's just put that about like that so we have pretty well um, equal acceleration and deceleration values like we did 500 and 500 for instance and so it will accelerate at 500 millimeters per second squared until it gets to our 
uh, velocity, which we have set to 100 uh, millimeters per second. And then it will automatically determine how much time it needs to decelerate to reach your position in the delta time that it, it, that it has. And so um, what you're looking at is the amount of time here that it takes to make the entire move. Okay, so let's change some of these parameters and see what happens. So with a faster A cell, say we doubled it or so, we increase its slope and we arrive at Vmax a lot sooner in the delta time and we end up getting to our position faster. Uh, the same goes for a quicker D cell. We would do the same thing and we would end up with an overall faster move. So you're limited, of course, by the load that you're carrying, by the power of your motor, by the following error that's okay in your system, all those sorts of things limit that. So this is your acceleration number, this is your uh, Vmax number. If you manage to put Vmax so high, so say Vmax is way up here, and your Excel looks like this, and your D cell looks like this, the point that they cross is sort of an artificial Vmax, and that's what I, I call a triangular move which is perfectly acceptable. That's kind of the highest performance move that you can do for a given acceleration and deceleration. So if, if you're really trying to get cycle time out of it, you want almost a triangular move. So as soon as he's done accelerating, he begins decelerating. So let's get rid of that stuff and I'll explain one more concept to you here. It's called jerk. And so jerk is actually the second derivative of velocity, which would be the derivative of acceleration. So you're limiting the amount, in, or in our case, we have a jerk limited move so you are limiting the amount that this acceleration is allowed to change its slope so if you think of it like right off the bat we have a slope that's allowed like this and then one time unit passes and we can now slope like this another time unit passes we can slope like this a time unit passes like this until we get to our final a cell so what it does is actually ends up making sort of a curve and it rounds these edges here like that and like this which can be really nice so that your motor isn't having to make these big mechanical jerky motions as soon as it goes from no acceleration like a constant velocity here all of a sudden to a really fast acceleration so it just smooths things out and this jerk can really save on your your vibration and your hardware and all kinds of stuff so it's nice to sort of uh, draw this out in scope view which I'll, I'll show you I think on the next video and just uh, make sure that you you're, have nice smooth motion and, and typically you can smooth this out until you either don't make your acceleration target or you stop gaining time and you just get you know the kind of the best of all worlds there so your move will end up looking like this if you jerk limit it appropriately but for what we're doing whoops for what we're doing our jerk limit is uh, set to just a really high number so we're getting these sharp corners on our move and that's fine for what we're what we're after right now all right, enough of that. Let's go back to our code and see what we did here. And jerks, pretty high, pretty high number here. We could scope that and see if it's affecting us, but I don't think it is. Jump over to state 310. Uh, so what we do here, we move absolute and we set execute to true, and then we move over here. Notice we're not calling uh, MC move absolute here, and that's because I'm doing it way up here and just calling it every time with no parameters except for the axis. So down here, uh, 310 mc move absolute dot done is so anytime we're in this state the axis is moving ideally and so we need to wait on that axis to finish moving and not be an error as soon as it does we'll call that with false to make sure we reset it for next time and what i'm doing now is ju i'm just playing around essentially here so i current move equals one we set it to the start of our moves we're going to do a number of moves is five and then we're going to jump here to our relative section so by the end of this state, as soon as done comes true, we should be at relative position 100. That's 100 millimeters from the home position. So once we're happy we've arrived there, we go to state 400, and that's where we begin our relative moves. So we say if the current move is less than the number of moves, does that mean we have more to do? And right off the bat, of course we do. So we'll increment this for next time. Calculate a new distance, which is the current move times the distance each time. So we're just going to kind of wiggle this thing back and forth, back and forth. And then we're going to jump to 410. So 410 starts a relative move as opposed to the absolute that we did earlier. 
and he's going to move the move distance, which is uh, it's going to be 10 on the first one, 20 on the second one, and so on. The velocity I have set to our maximum velocity for the drive, so we can actually get a little bit of performance out of this. Acceleration is uh, pretty quick. Uh, that'd be a fifth of a G right there. About a fifth of a G on deceleration, and then a million for jerk is just kind of up there high, so it's not going to mess us up right now. Uh, as soon as that goes, which we execute it right there, pops over to state 420, MC move rail dot done, exactly the same um, you know, way that we use this as MC move absolute. We just, instead of giving it a position like we did here, we give it a uh, distance right here. So it's positive or negative from where we are. So in this case, it's positive. He's going to move. As soon as he's done, he jumps back to, uh, well, he goes to state 450, move back to ABS. Start position is not actually what we're doing there. That's not correct. Uh, so we will move negative rail back to, I guess, technically to the start position. So we've moved back a negative move rail distance. I just threw a negative in front of this. So he'll move back to where we started this sort of dancey jig thing that he's going to do. So then we jump over to state 460, wait on him to, to move. So this is when he's moving back. And as soon as he's done, we go to state 400, not to 500. So we're going to come back around and do a mini loop here. And we're going to say, oh, is there more to do? Or was that my final one? Because remember, we incremented this here. Boom, there's more to do. We'll loop through four or five times. And then otherwise, we jump to 500. And in 500, I have an absolute move back to position zero. So this is right by the home sensor. And then we go to state 510. 510 is just waiting on it to complete. As soon as you see it done, we go all the way back to 200, which is where I let the foot throttle uh, pedal hold us up. So we'll be able to run a couple cycles of this uh, at our leisure. And then here is MC move absolute error. We always check for that and turn our function block false again. And there'll be an error number and all kinds of stuff stored in this. So normally in state 9999, you would handle that, maybe post it to the user, say, you know, decode that error and say, hey, you know, limit switch is turned on or, or what have you. So that's the gist of the code I added. So let's hop online and go on the servo and see if we can make it go. Okay. I moved us back to state 20 in the code and did an online change there so the code is running and ready to home as soon as I push on the pedal. There it goes. It homed off the sensor so I'm at about position 3.7 or somewhere around there. I'm going to hit the pedal again. I'm in state 200 now so I'm going to move on forward to uh, the absolute move first and then he's going to do his relative moves and then he's going to go back to zero. Now we're just waiting on the next cycle, so I'm going to hit my foot switch again. Absolute, relative, 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 and absolute back to zero. So if you picture this as a part comes in, we sense it, and then we need to go do something like dispense glue, that's where it might be nice to have a bunch of relative moves. And so if you had two part positions, one that's on the left side of the bed, one that's on the right, you can move to that position, then do your little dance all with relative moves, and that way you can program that in one time, and no matter where you start it from, you have relative moves. So that's sort of where relative fits in. Absolutes work great as well, and uh, this is just, it, it's very cool to me because this is, uh, we're in maybe two and a half hours, and we're able to control this axis uh, in this sort of way. So. Obviously, there's more questions yet to be answered, so uh, stick around and join me on the next video, and we'll check that out. Like these videos and subscribe to me if, you, uh, if you're enjoying them, and uh, that'll help me out. Appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.